So this is the first video for chapter 7, which is all about something called random variables. And if I could just kind of set the scene for a second, you're not going to get a ton of new concepts in chapter 7. What you will get is a lot of new terminology or new notation. Um, in many ways, chapter 7 reviews some ideas we've talked about all along and just slaps on top of it a little bit of new way of um, new notation for those ideas. Um, there is a little bit of new material, but it's um, you're going to see a lot of ideas revisited with just new notation. Uh, section 7.1, which is this, what this video is about, talks about discrete and continuous random variables. So first I want to define what a random variable is, and then I want to define for you the difference between discrete and continuous, and that's basically what's in section 7.1. So first of all, what do we mean by a random variable? And random variable, by the way, we usually use capital letters like X and Y. So a random variable is a variable, although in a different sense than a variable in algebra. It's a variable whose value is a numerical outcome of a random phenomenon. So that's kind of weird terminology. What do we mean by that? Well, for example, we might say the random variable X, and that's a capital X, is the number of hearts you get when you deal out a poker hand. So think about that. Dealing out a poker hand is a random phenomenon, and the number of hearts you get is some numerical value. And so that's really all we mean. Um, a random variable is a number that comes from some kind of random event. Um, so we might say Y is the weight of a randomly picked apple. You pick an apple up a tree, how heavy is it in ounces? That's a random variable. So, so far, nothing really new there. I just want to introduce the terminology. We're going to look at things, for example, like you might write down the probability that x equals 2. Now, what would that mean? That's the probability that the random variable x is 2. That's the probability you get exactly two hearts, right? We might write down things like the probability that x is greater than 3. Right? That's the probability that you get more than three hearts, which is probably not very likely. You might write down something like the probability that y is less than 8.6. Right? That's the probability that this random apple is less than 8.6 ounces. I just want you to see that because that's the kind of terminology we're going to be looking at, um, or the notation, I should say, throughout uh, section 7.1. Now, I we thought we'd talk about what's the difference between a discrete random variable and a continuous random variable. That's one of the big ideas in this section. And the way to think about it is actually a discrete random variable is a staircase, whereas a continuous random variable is a ramp. Now, what do I mean by that? Right? Think of the previous situation where I talked about x, which was the number of hearts. What are the possible values for x? Right? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's like a staircase because you can't get 1.2 hearts. Whereas y, the weight of an apple in ounces, you could have an apple that is 6 ounces, 6.01 ounces, 6.2392 ounces, right? It's, it's the idea of a ramp. A discrete random variable, only certain values are allowed, and those values are kind of represented by the staircase. A continuous random variable, all possible values are allowed, okay? Um, kind of think about sometimes it gets a little bit confusing, but you know in general, like the number of students in a class, right? That would be uh, a discrete variable because you can't have 3.2 students. Um, you know the height of a student, well that's continuous because a student could actually be uh, kind of any height. Just focusing on that one example though, think about height being is that continuous or discrete? It's technically continuous, although the way we talk about height often, we think about it as discrete because we say someone is five foot ten or five foot eleven. You know, rarely do you say someone is five foot ten point two three nine two, right? Um, a similar thing sort of happens like with your grade on a uh, a test. Usually, those are in increments of percent. The next grade after eighty eight is an eighty nine. Um, similarly, think about like what is your GPA? Technically, it's continuous, but often we talk about it as to two decimal places, right? No one really ever says their GPA is 3.16249. They say 3.11 or 3.12. Um, so very often, continuous random variables, while things are technically continuous, we use them in common nature as discrete, okay? Um, here's just a silly example. And we're going to talk about uh, this example as our first example of a discrete uh, random variable. So I'm going to say there's two rows in this, but we're actually only going to use the first one. So what I'm going to call the first thing x is the number, so let's say let 
x be the number of people in a household. And what they've given you here is what is called a uh, discrete probability table. Right, that's what this is. We're actually not going to use, oh gee, I just have to draw a straight line here. There we go. We're not going to use the second row. Um, so a discrete probability table just says, let's, it's a table listing all the probabilities for all of the outcomes, the possible outcomes of a discrete random variable. So for example, let's do kind of three examples, parts A, B, and C. What if I said, what's the probability that X equals 2? Well, that's the probability that there's exactly two people in your household. Well, it's just easy to look that up in the table. That's 0.32. Part B might be, what is the probability that x is less than 4? Well, less than 4, what are the possible things less than 4? 0, 1, and 2. That'd be 0.25 plus 0 0.32 plus 0.17, which is point. Sorry, 0 0.74. I think I did that math right, didn't I? hope so. Part C, we can actually combine some notation before. What if I said, what is the probability that x is equal to 1 or x is equal to 6? Well, we know that's the probability. There, These are disjoint events, so it's the probability that x equals 1 plus the probability that x equals 6 which is 0.25 plus 0.03 is 0.28. See how it's things we've done before, just with a little extra notation on top. I, want you to just, I just wanted you to see this notation, this kind of notation. So here's another discrete random variable example. We have two dice. Uh, the first die is a regular die. You can get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Um, those are the six faces. The second die, though, is an unusual die in that three of the faces have a one on them and three of the faces have a, uh, a five on them. Um, and so it's a little bit unusual. It's not a normal die. Um, and x is going to be the sum of the two dice. So you roll the two dice, add them together, and you, you know, what, what's, the, uh, what's the sum? So we want to find the probability that x equals six and then x is greater than six. What's different about this question is we have to make the table uh, ourselves. Um, and so the way to think about it, actually, the way I'm going to approach it is actually this die really, it's kind of like flipping a coin, right? Because half the time you're going to get a 1, and half the time you're going to get a 5. So you could do it as a tree diagram, but I think actually I'm just going to use enumeration and list out the possibilities, thinking about the idea that the second die really is just like flipping a coin. So I'm going to go first die 1, second die 1, then 1, excuse me, let me erase that, then I'm going to say... 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, 5, 1, 6, 1. And then we'll say 1, 5, 2, 5, 3, 5, 4, 5, 5, 5, 6, 5. And then can figure out what, what are those outcomes end up being. Well, how many out you end up with, if I just kind of copy that chart, you're going to get 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, what did I do wrong here? Shoot, I messed up again. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, there actually are twelve possible outcomes, but you'll notice that uh, two of them end up being six, and two of them end up being seven. So when you make our chart, let me make our chart down here. And again, you could this is the same. You could do the same thing, kind of with a tree diagram. Okay, this is going to be the outcome for x. This is the probability. And actually, let me be a little more clear with the way I write this. Usually, this is going to be like a little lowercase x, so it's tough to tell. And this is the prob. Come on, pen. That big capital X equals this little value x. Okay, that's meant to be capital X. And so this is the this is the little value x, and then this this is the same thing here. So then I'm going to write 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Dun, 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 Okay. Well, it turns out there's 12 possible outcomes. This is 1 12th, 
one twelfth, one twelfth, one twelfth, uh, two twelfths. I'll write it like that, but it's one six. Two twelfths, one twelfth, one twelfth, one twelfth, one twelfth. So now we can kind of go back up here and say, well, what's the probability that x equals 6? Uh, well, the answer is just it equals 2 twelfths. What's the probability that x is greater than 6? Well, greater than 6 does not include 6, right? So all we're talking about are these outcomes all down here, where x is 7, 8, 9, 10, or 11. We get 2 twelfths, 3 twelfths, 4 twelfths, 5 twelfths, 6 twelfths. Is that right? Six twelfths? Yep. Six twelfths, which of course we probably want to write as one half. Right? That's a good example. Okay, our last example. This is an example of a continuous random variable. Okay, continuous. So you're not going to be able to make a chart for it because there's really an infinite number of values. So let's just say there's an oven, and uh, the mean, it's the, the temperature in the oven is normally distributed. The mean is 352 degrees, and the standard deviation is 11. Let z, z is a random variable. It's a continuous random variable. That's the oven, the temperature in the oven. And then here's just this notation from the probability that z is greater than 360. Okay? Well, this is exactly what we've done before. All we're doing is we're slapping a little bit of new notation on top. Because all you have to do is think about it as, well, it's a normal distribution. The mean is 352. Standard deviation is 11, here's 360, shade this way. So on a calculator, you would say normal CDF. And then remember, it's left is 360, right is a big number. Let me leave myself a room. 352 is the mean, 11 is the standard deviation. And I get that the probability that Z is greater than 360 is about 0.2335. Okay? So here's a case where a uh, continuous random variable, as long as you know that it's normal, okay, is exactly the things we've done before. Um, and that's basically section 7.1.